Today we're looking into what happens when you overexpose in film photography. This question came to me kind of by accident as my EOS 500s were underexposing with the light meter. I think there's something with the voltage in them since they're so old. They just think that there's more light in the image than there is. This led me to have some very grainy and very muddy looking photos on my first two rolls. And then I found some that were actually sharp and I was like, wow, what's going on here? So what we're gonna do today is pretty straightforward and we're gonna take a series of six photos for each one of these scenarios that we're gonna have. Three stops underexposed, one stop underexposed, and then proper one stop over, two stops over, three stops over, and see what happens. I've loaded, loaded some Portrait 400 into my EOS 3, and we're gonna take the photos with that because I believe the light meter on that is much better even though I haven't quite tested it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work no matter what. You know what I'm really hoping to figure out in this test that I'm not entirely sure what's gonna happen yet is that you can overexpose into the highlights and still get really, really good details in your shadows. All right, so put all the effort in, took all these photos, and then I did a little bit of a walkthrough on these. I struggled with them for about two days, but now I have my final conclusions on what I think. The I'm only gonna show you a few of these portraits and then maybe just walk through the different color variants across the landscape. And we're gonna go, and then this one right here, the very top one, you see this with the lighters? This is gonna show you, I'm gonna use this one to show you everything that I learned, because it shows it so perfectly. So let's go into this, super underexposed right here, no texture. And then we're gonna to go to the properly one above exposed. And as you can see, it's getting much more warm as it goes up and even like some weird purple in that three above. Uh, this stuff just gets corrected quite easily right there, but it is shifted because this is a warmer day and outside. And what's happening is you're losing some of the contrast as you start to push up into the overexposed areas on these film and you really just lose the contrast in parts of it so going over to the landscapes the more underexposed it is the more blue the portrait 400 was and that's what i found across all of these images and really it's a very very easy fix uh, this one's already been adjusted. The more you expose, the more warm it gets. But that's that's totally fine. It was super easy to deal with. But this one right here, where it's this lighter, uh, watch right here. I'm going to zoom in, and this is the area that will show you everything that you need to know about this test that I just did. Okay, so when you look at this ring, it's really hard to see. But inside here, it's going to say 1921 right there. You can barely make out the 1921. And in here, you're going to start seeing the textures and the shadows and how they change across the exposures. And this area is just pretty, so but not as, not as great and informative. So watch this area as I go through. So this is the negative three. This is one stop underexposed. So you can see that there's a bunch of grain and no texture inside there, but you can make out the 1921 there. Look in here on this area, there's no textures inside the shadows and they're just so very grainy. And then here is what properly exposed would be. As you can see over here, it looks perfectly fine. But when you start going into these shadows and the darker textured areas here, you really start to notice that there's, there's just a lot of grain in there. And then we're going to bump it up. So this is one overexposed. Now it just sharpened up with one overexposed. And I think the scanning process or me not being quite as adept at it made them look very similar. But the grain inside the shadows is almost completely gone. And when you bump it up one more, you can see the image getting warmer. But now you can see almost all the textures inside this ring. And then the shadows are getting even more pleasant over here. And as you can see, it's getting more warm, which is what's been across all of these photos thus far. And then here's three above. Now, what you'll notice as well here, you can see all of the textures and this is, there's no grain in any of the shadow. And then you could come back if you wanted more because right now it's very whitewashed looking and very warm. So in comparison to here or here, where these are have very, very, not saturated, but uh, they have very distinct colors to them. So when we come here, it's very whitewashed. So by adding contrast, 
you start to get all those colors back. And then if you just do something else, which is boost the highlights and drop the shadows, you can get a very similar, even more pleasant effect in my opinion as well to combat this because you're really losing your contrast and your cinematic look is you can come in here and do an S curve and then you can really dial in how you want it to look. And this is, I want less on the highlights because I like how that looks, but I do want more of these shadows to have that sh actual shadow look. And so that actually comes in and gives it a very pleasant overall. And now there's no grain in there. There's no grain really at all. And I've already adjusted right there is how warm it would have been. And then just simply sliding that down. Uh, it depends on what you want the end product to look like. I think right there is probably perfect. And that's really what I learned while messing around and doing this experiment. I had all these other photos that I was going to talk to you about, but this photo right here really shows it. From all the way underexposed, negative one, properly exposed. See how much grain is still there? Even if I go and boost these shadows right there, see how much grain is in there? It's still there. So you can definitely manage to overexpose two to three stops and still be good in many situations. The reasons that overexposing didn't work so well over here is because it is a very high contrast situation where Julia is here and she's in the shade ever so slightly and the building behind her is overexposed. So if there was shade and overcast and there was the same lighting on Julia as there was on the walls behind her, this would be a very different looking photo and film would have a much easier time dealing with it from what I can tell thus far. So thank you so very much for watching. I hope you learned something as I learned too. I struggled for about three days doing all of this. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all things film cameras to help you shoot and have more fun out there while you're shooting your film. Take care and don't forget to like and subscribe.